Right, vibration damping. Or Silvent, yeah, they're one of the primary suppliers of nozzles. They're probably the most high tech. Their chances aren't cheap. <coughs> do work well. <laughs> um, thin sheet metal as guards, as machine guards, as panels on machines, and so on, on vibrators, on whatever. You feed vibration to the active loudspeakers. So if you put, if you take an elastic band and do this, and then feel it, the elastic band gets hot. Because you're dissipating that vibration energy as heat, so all the, all the elastomer molecules move past each other. So you've, you've got friction in there, hysteric, hysteric damping. And so you're dissipating vibration energy as heat. So if you've got bitch elastic damping material, which is available from loads of suppliers, onto the steel sheet, the steel sheet will be somewhat damped. But it's not very effective. When they demonstrate it, they hang up a piece of steel, and then they hang up one with a bitch mastic on it, and they go ding, 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 and they go dump, 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 oh, fantastic. But in real life, that, that piece of steel sheet is, is bolted or welded to something, which means when you hit it, it already goes dang, 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 it doesn't ring. So, in that case, as the metal vibrates and you're bending it, you're stretching a little bit of the rubber, which dissipates some of the vibration heat. If you go to a laminate, as you bend it, you are deforming the whole volume of the viscoelastic material. And so, this stuff is made in a factory, with, and they use a special bonding material. It's very, very high damping and very high holding force. So, I'll pass this round. Um, and this is an order of magnitude more, more efficient than that. Plus, that peels off. It's not hygienic, and it wears. Where it wears off. Whereas this is long lasting the steel itself. So as an engineer, I much prefer this. Because it's permanent and it's rugged. So this is a case in point, motor rotor on the power assisted steering for an A-class Mercedes. And they came to us and said, this is our problem. This is the motor rotor, okay, which is used to power the steering, and that's our problem. We've been looking at enclosing the, the motor unit, but it's a hassle, it's difficult, we've looked at all blah, blah, blah. So we said, okay, what you do, you make it out of laminated steel, sound down steel, instead. 19 feet off. That is formed on the same press as that. Direct swap. A little bit of adjustment to the press, that's all that's required, so that's what's in the A-class Mercedes. And on a test rig, the noise from the electric motor drive on an automotive power steering system needed to be reduced during development. The main problem was motor rotor resonances excited at certain speeds. The following recording is of the rundown noise from a typical motor. was asked to design a damped rotor. When fitted, this reduced the resonance by 17 dB, as illustrated by the following recording. So, um, this is um, in your Hotel room, we have a mini bar with miniatures. You probably wondered when they're filling the miniatures, how do they get all the bottles the right way up to fill it automatically? What they do is they stick them into the hopper, which feeds into the machine, and they vibrate the whole hopper. Now the hopper is bolted to the planet, so there's a lot of you have to turn the vibration up quite high to accidentally get a little bit of vibration to the bottles. 
So they were going to put an enclosure on it, costing about three grand or more, and you needed access to fill the hopper, which would be a hassle. So what we did, we put a laminated steel plate in, mounted on grommets, so it's isolated from that, and the vibrators went through two little holes bolted to the centre of the plate. So it sounds a bit odd, damping the very plate you're vibrating, but this damps all the high frequencies, which cause a noise problem, but doesn't stop low frequency vibration like that, which is doing the bottle movement. So it improved, massively improved the feed, and gave 80 dBA, cost of 400 quid, and no enclosures, no hassles with filling or anything, of course, to open the water. And this is a weighing machine on a platform. Anything that's in bags is what goes to a weighing machine. It can be nuts and bolts, it can be um, produce shipments, it can be sweets, it can be whatever. You want a certain weight of product in a bag, so you have your bagging machine underneath, and you filter all the stuff through, and certain controlled weights get dropped. And typically, the manufacturers sell enclosures. This is a very expensive enclosure, it costs about 18 grand. Typically, they cost 8 to 10 grand. Um, enclosures get about 5 dBA on the platform, but usually increase the noise underneath where the operator stands because you're funneling the noise down. Um, we develop engineering techniques based on damping and things. Um, the manufacturers know what we do, but they make more money out of selling enclosures. So they sell enclosures. Um, this gives typically 10 to 12 dBA off at between 10 and 25% of the cost of the enclosure. And in this particular case, 94 dBA with the enclosure fitted. Take the enclosure off and do all the damping, we're down to 82 dBA. And no enclosure means instead of a half a weekend down for cleaning, it's down for two hours. And another application, this is an egg farm, environmental <coughs> noise problem. They had stuck up an enormous barrier, people complaining. Um, the diagnosis, again, accurate diagnosis, was this is the motor with a belt drive to the fan. They've got 168 fans. And the noise is radiated off this cowl here. So a retrofit damping kit was just fitted to each of the fans. <coughs> So instead of spending £100,000 on a barrier, which <coughs> wouldn't have worked very well, they spent four yes. quid per fan for 13 dB attenuation, and it sounded like this, that complainer. <coughs> it's all based on accurate diagnosis again, working out exactly how the noise is generated, where it's radiated from, and then fixing it by using simple laminated steel. On larger components, you can't use laminated steel because it's the thicker the material, the harder it is to damp. Because the amount of noise radiated depends upon how, how much is this, this is deflected by the vibration. The bigger the deflection, the more noise, imagine a loud speaker, it will move quite a certain amount. So the thicker this is, the less it moves. You have to put a lot more energy in, and you can only remove a certain amount of energy. If it moves by one millimetre, you can remove a certain amount of energy. If it's thin plate like this moves one, one millimetre, that is a massive amount of proportion of energy. If this is, this is an inch thick, moving by one millimetre, the amount of energy required to move that by one millimetre is massive. So your amount you can reduce, you can eliminate, is tiny compared to the overall engine in that system. So you're very limited to how much you can produce. So the thinner the sheet metal, the better. Optimally, both layers should be the same thickness, because you can create this lamp in situ. The company make add-on dampers. So you can take a hopper or a flat guard, and you can damp it retrospectively. Or you can remanufacture out of this. It depends on the application. But ideally, the two layers are equal thickness. But you can go down to one layer being down to a third of the thickness without losing a frictable down thickness, that's a rule of thumb. But once you get to about a centimetre thick, it gets very difficult to damp. But the thin sheet, very, very good. This is an application which is a bit like the Millennium Bridge. You know they fitted, they had this problem with people walking across the bridge, swaying. Now, when they said that, I said, I thought, 
I use dynamic vibration absorbers to do that, it's easy. And that's what they do. You go underneath the landing bridge, they've got these big masses with shock absorbers and springs, and they're tuned to the bridge frequency. So um, I don't think they should have fixed it. I think they should have charged it as a ride. I think that would be much more entertaining. But <clears throat> uh, it's the same thing motorway bridges. The old bridges used to be, because they didn't have computer modeling, you look at the M1, all the bridges are like brilliant, simple. More modern motorways have these quite elegant, some quite elegant bridges, you know, the room. And some of them have unfortunate resonances. You know the thing about soldiers not marching a step across a bridge? Well, a lot of these bridges are to link two halves of a farm that the motorways cut through, so the cows have to go over. So if you're a cow and you're walking across a bridge, and as you walk across, it goes, it starts to bounce. As a cow, you go, mm -hmm. no, I'm not doing that. So you can't get the cows across. So when that happens, what you do is you have a mass on a spring with a shock absorber inside the hollow section of the bridge, which takes out the footfalls. So what's happening is the bridge stays still and the shock, the, vibra the dynamic vibration absorber bounces up and down, taking out the footfalls. So the cow goes, mm -hmm. that'll be fine. This can also be used, that's a power press that makes oil filter base plates for cars. Just stamps it out, forms and stamps it. Again, very expensive enclosure planned, but on analysis, most of the noise is coming off the climb or ringing like a belt. So we designed these dynamic vibration absorbers which is bolted onto the flow at the right places. That has 15, 20 quid materials and a day of fitter, and we have 10 dBA of. So this sort of thing. What sort of areas? You definitely know, wasn't it? So I think we, we vibrate through hoppers, I think. Yeah. But we also have reject, shoots. like stainless steel reject shoots and cabins. I was going to say, in my experience, yeah, reject can. shoots or shoots for finished products mm. or whatever, whether it's tablets or containers or whatever, um, are absolute classic. And it's, I just walk around and I go, oh my god, if only the engineers knew about this stuff. Yeah. You know, it's just it's a no-brainer. Bang, done. And problem solved. No hygiene problems. No wear problems. But as I said earlier on, how many have heard of this? Zero. That's common. You know, I did the BIHS conference. What, hundred people there? How many of you know about this? Three people. That hands up. You know, if people just knew about these things, materials, it suddenly becomes very, very easy to same with, with same with with. Um, Pneumatic nozzles and sciences. Just new, then it's a very, very simple yeah. fit. And it is like, from this, for me, it's like you don't know what you don't know, do you? Mm. And no. so, if you, you knew that there's the option for that, <coughs> you'd sort of try and promote that a lot more. Um, but not knowing, it's almost like stainless steel or nothing. That's how I have to do well, it. Well, stainless steel. That makes but it stainless steel, yeah. you know. Um, and most pharmaceutical food factories I go through, there's loads and loads of shoots and hoppers who say, you know, and or guides to deflect things and, and just stay in steel everywhere. Just replace the noisy bits. You know it. It's cheap and simple. Any other applications for this sort of thing? Because the other thing is, for instance, guards on couplings. Or general guards are subject to high levels of vibration from gearboxes or gearbox panels or anything that's thin metal. It's radiating like a loudspeaker. We've got loads of vibration balls on site. Um, it depends you because to, it, you'd have to. You'd have to be, be, every single machine. You'd have to be a bit careful about that because um, it depends how much noise is coming off the product, rattling against itself, other product, and how much is radiated by the bowl itself. Mm. Well, the, the products are plastic. Yeah, but that can still generate a lot of noise. The, the trick here is run it empty. How it, does the noise level change? Well, actually, this is since you brought that up, let's let's look at this. Okay, you've got a bowl feeder, with plastic component. Is it a bowl or is it a rectangular? Bowl. A bowl. Okay. They're all balls. They're usually the little plastic valves that go on the front of the mask. So, like a little plastic. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. So, what's the process for working out noise control options? Identify the sources and then identify the possible list. List of so, what are the noise sources on your bolt fingers? The vibration. What does the bolt mean? Vibration in what? Of the actual ball itself. Okay, so we've got ball vibration. Yeah. Okay, what else? The parts. They drop into it first. Hang on. Part. Part. Impact. Could be part ball impact as well. The part ball. We also have air. Nozzle, yeah, I was going to say air, air like blowing them off if they're not in the right position. So you yeah. have air blowing as well. Yeah. Well, you got a, a motor or a, something causing it to vibrate? Uh, yes, we'll, we'll treat that as ball vibration because normally it's electromagnetic. <coughs> it's just um, it doesn't actually touch. It shouldn't touch. Right. It's just vibrating. It's usually fifty. 50 Sometimes 50, if it's like, um, if it's not tight enough, it does rattle. Yeah, well, we'll, 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 we'll treat that as one of those, really. So, okay, um, how do you rank those? So, I'm to measure them and look at it. Yeah. I'm not guessing because wow. I've learned that. No. <laughs> but yes. how, what would you do? A simple test, like I already told you. Yes, yeah, so you can try with the parts in it. And yeah, then no parts. We'd have the air switched like, off. Yeah. Air switched yeah, off, no parts, just run the bowl. If it's properly set up, it'll be a low hum. We do have someone that comes in and um, services them. Hmm every so often, you know, to make sure that they're vibrating at the yeah. correct speed. Well, what happens is, is these, these bowls are, they've got, they've got sort of um, flexible arms on them, springs effectively, and there's an electromagnet in there that's switching, and it's pulling corpus, which is attached to the bowl, and making the bowl vibrate like that, in a certain pattern. Mm. And it shouldn't touch the, it should not, because some people turn them up and, and the electromagnetic starts to hammer. Instead of just going like that, it bang. And that causes a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. And that also bugs up the, trans the, 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 the flow. You know, we, we, did, we did tests on, this wasn't a bowl feeder, but it was um, a linear feeder, a big hopper, which is vibrated with plastic components for um, hypodermic syringes bodies. Okay, it's feeding them into the machine. And we actually had one, they had a lot of problems with fatigue, medical fatigue, cracking, a lot of maintenance issues. And we, put, we had one say, right, you've got one you've just fixed in the workshop, let's do a test. So we put a load of hydrodermic syringe bodies in, and we tested how fast they went as at various levels of vibration. And the feed rate went up, went up, steady, steady, and then started to go down as they turned it up. On the line, Two thirds of them were past the best flow, they just kept turning it up. No one turns it down to make it flow faster because that's obviously stupid. But we found the flow rate went up and up and up, leveled off, and then starts to go down due to turn the vibration up. So we locked them all off at a set, set point so it couldn't happen anymore. And also use laminated steel at the very so that would change the geometry slightly as well to make it flow better. But if you turn, if you turn off the air, take the components out, if it's properly done, it should just be a low frequency hum, which doesn't it's noisy. If it's turned up too <coughs> high, it becomes non-linear. And what that means is you start getting impacts, which gives you high frequency sound. So the trick is to, to have it at a level that you just get this low frequency hum, which is doing the proper feeling, and lock it off so that you can't turn it out. Have you got adjustment for vibration in the feeders? Yes. People will turn them up too high. And the other thing is that um, air is used for two things, in my experience, on, on um, bowl feeders. One is the proper job, upside down, it's flipped off. So you need, you need that. The other one is, on the outfeed, because it's not properly angled, they need air to help them along. I think they use that as well. And we've got air quite often, the quite often well. it's, just, it's just fundamentally bad design of the geometry and if you can fix that you get rid of the compressed air entirely on that bit. Or you may be able to turn the pressure down a lot. So that's the first test is without components. And that tells you when you put the components in, the noise level goes up by more than 3 dB, most of the noise is going to come 
component, component impact or component bowl impact. Now, one thing you can do to you think of a way of eliminating the component bowl impact? Use some kind of a yeah, you, 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 thin, yeah. you thin rubber sheet, just line it temporarily, and then you just got <coughs> component component, and that tells you how much noise is coming from component component, and how much off component on bowl. And that also tells you the component component noise, there's nothing you can do about it, as long as the vibrations are right, yeah. all you can do is put a lid on. So that takes away all the guesswork on, on that. If the bowl is radiating a significant amount of noise, and that depends on design, one of the things on bowl feeders, some of them have, like that, the components drop in, and they have a, a dome in the bottom. No, I was tend to go around the side. Yeah, mm -hmm. but when they're dropped in, I mean, some of them and are the rotating the feeders the as well, with cap feeders and yeah. things, they have a dome in the middle. And that dome <coughs> is um, formed, it's, um, it's called, uh, what's it called? It's called Back to you. <laughs> it's formed in a process and um, uh, damn, my mind's gone blank. I've got a bit jet lag, I got back from Mexico a few days ago. <laughs> um, yeah, and this rings like a bell, so you can make an animated for it. Um, we've actually tested that. We can actually make an I don't think we've got the door. But anyway, we definitely have. So that's, that's, a, that's a, just another, but you're, what you're looking for is parts of the bowl uh, or associated stuff, but if you tap it, it goes on point, doing, 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 and you know that can be down to that. Um, so that's all of those looked at. But also, as I said, controlling the vibration level. We're always so, turning the air up. We love to turn the air up all the time. Exactly. So what you do, do you know what sort of nozzles they use? Are they just copper pipes, or are they, have they got train, dual train nozzles on? Not 100% sure. You need to look at that, because two things. One, it's fitted train nozzles. Two, quite often, the nozzles are miles away from the product. Put the nozzle as close as possible and turn the air pressure down. Also, the geometry, because as I mentioned earlier, quite often, the geometry is bad, so you need a lot of air to help with the feed. Sometimes the outfeed is also vibratory. You know, it's, it's, it's channeled with a vibrator on it. And again, you know, sometimes I'll just say, look, just jack the bowl up by 50 millimeters, have a slight more slope on the outfeed, gravity. and use it gravity. And you, you we tend to shove the them along with air. Yeah, yeah, use half the air pressure. All the time. But also, wow. where you put the nozzles. <laughs> You know, really experiment. Yeah. Perfect angle, perfect distance, rock it off there, turn the pressure right down, save a massive amount of pressed air and noise. So all that stuff is really quite straightforward. There's something that just you should be doing on all bowl feeders, vibratory feeders all kinds. Yeah. So mixing those with with laminated um, steel, etc. Any other questions or comments on that? Because you can take that away. No, I'm not going to take a picture. <coughs> Ta-da! <laughs> but you can see the process. You can see the process here. Yeah. That's the process. It, it helps you think about it in the right way. Any other applications for down here? Okay. Let's see what we can do from a, just if you've got something on the floor, so that you've got vibration onto the floor structure, which is obviously needs to be cleanable, etc. Would the damping plate still be? No, you, no. because I'll, I'll, I'll ask you that question again afterwards. But okay. 